true. Elon Musk has reinstated Donald Trump's Twitter account. He was unsuspended, like my pants when I used to dance at Chippendales. <laughs> That's after Musk posted a poll in which over 15 million users voted in favor of reinstatement. Of course, we're still waiting on the results of that poll from Maricopa County. <laughs> the final result, 51.8% in favor, 48.2% opposed, which is the same ratio of people at Fox who voted that I should come to work topless. Oh. Yeah, I edged out Trey Gowdy by a couple of points. <laughs> On Saturday, Musk tweeted, the people have spoken. Trump will be reinstated. Vox Populi, Vox Day. I think I, that last part is Latin for F you, you whiny losers. <laughs> it actually means the voice of the people is the voice of God. Whoever heard that never heard Joy Behar on the toilet. <laughs> Just think about it. Now, it's been a while since Trump's been on Twitter. It's been so long that Tom Brady is divorced, Kanye is no longer a billionaire, and Ilan Omar is now shaving her mustache three times a week. <laughs> Don't clap for that. That's disgusting. <laughs> I disown that. Oh, brother. He was banned on January 8th, 2021. Do you remember why? I sure don't. I remember him saying, march peacefully to the Capitol. But earlier in the day, Trump didn't seem too excited to return. I bet he heard we're getting a big vote to also go back on Twitter. I hear we're getting a big vote to also go back on Twitter. Uh, I, I don't see it because I don't see any reason for it. Truth Social uh, is, is through the roof. It's doing phenomenally well. And still, Musk's decision on Trump sets the stage for the return of the platform's most influential user since Michael Moore's fingers got too fat. <laughs> <laughs> He's, wow. And of course, right on cue, the media, politicians and celebs already freaking out. From a New York Times op-ed, quote, I studied Trump's Twitter use for six years. Prepare for the worst. <laughs> so that's what they do instead of verifying Hunter's laptop. <laughs> but anyone who studied Trump's tweets for six years is, to borrow a Trump phrase, a loser. <laughs> I mean, that person is living life at a breakneck pace. I imagine here she hasn't had sex without requiring AA batteries in years. <laughs> then there's rock star Jack White deactivating his record label account. In an absurdly long Instagram post, he compared Trump to the KKK, a hate group that did to blacks what Jack White's last album did to everyone's ears. <laughs> Trust me, and I'm a fan. Then there was the panic vomit from the dopes on cable. Anyone who woke up this morning and saw that news had an avalanche of dread hit them. I'm absolutely disgusted, but what else do we expect from very white, privileged, cis, hetero men protecting each other? He's going to politicize it. He's going to use it. And all of those domestic terrorists uh, that he's leading will have a voice. Should we pray for Twitter to just collapse? It just underscores <laughs> the, the erratic leadership of Twitter now under Musk but also the security concerns uh, with security people fleeing Twitter uh, and what that means for the protection of Americans' uh, private data. Well, that guy's more full of crap than Jerry Nadler's pants. <laughs> but his reaction was what many echoed, and you're likely to keep hearing, that Musk leadership puts data at risk. And it's not just from individuals, even entire networks, who you might expect would welcome more speech, no matter who it's from. I mean, CBS now cares about your privacy, the network that pioneered ambush journalism with 60 Minutes. Late Friday, they shut down their various accounts in what they called, quote, in light of the uncertainty around Twitter and out of an abundance of caution. An abundance of caution. What I mean, that's what the legacy media is known for being? Overly cautious before they put something out there to the public? Where should we start, you Russiagate, Whipgate, the fine people hoax, Hunter's laptop is Russian disinfo. When it suits him, the networks jump the gun more often than a sprinter on meth. But by Sunday morning, CBS came back saying they'll continue to monitor the situation. In response, Elon posted this broke back mountain meme. <laughs> With the caption, our love will never die. 
He also <laughs> tweeted this to CBS. They should bring Walter Cronkite back. <laughs> As you know, Walter Cronkite is dead. So it's not possible, but it's funny. So the current funniest dude on Twitter, Musk, has just brought back the previous reigning champion, Trump, and we should embrace it because it's pissing off people who would love to ban things they don't want to hear rather than counter it with more speech. And they're also the same people who express more alarm over tweets than rampant crime, soaring inflation, or being on the cusp of a world war. In short, they're very selfish people, for they happily accept the current effed-up presidency because it doesn't affect their fragile psyche. And due to their wealth and high status, they can endure the cost. Sure, everyone's paying more for food, and some people never make it home from work. But at least these losers, you know, they don't wake up at night having to think of Trump. Eh, too bad it's over. No, I would just say this. I, I think he should come back to Twitter. I mean, 90 million people he got in, in 24 hours. If he's running for president, how can you not use that platform? Um, but my favorite is the NAACP president. He said that Elon is failing democracy. And then you go over to Face the Nation, these like Sunday shows, which are, you know, high minded, right? Yeah. Well, they had an expert on who said this is 100% Russian disinformation that fueled the poll. Yeah. This is the GRU speaking, not the people of the world. I mean, come on, buddy. Yeah. Really, Russia? We're going to go back to Russia and failing democracy. Sounds familiar. That's amazing. Ugh. All right. <clears throat> Don't you love to see that, how they call, they were filled with an avalanche of dread. It's about their psyche. They don't, they, they don't show any pain for the inflation or crime, but they're worried. They're worried about the Trump coming back, yeah. yeah. And I have to focus for a moment on the CBS, what they did. Yes. The, the, that to me, because, you know, we expect a lot of hysteria coming out of, of the libs and the progressive left and the wokes and, and everyone. But the media writ large, for them to come out in their, you know, self-perceived austerity and say, we are closely monitoring the situation. Where have you been the past few years? You know, Democrat-led cities, triple-digit spikes in violent crimes, crickets. 12 police officers shot in one week last month, silence. Mm -hmm. Record-breaking migrants die at the southern border, 856 this fiscal year. Eh, nothing from them whatsoever. But Donald Trump returning to a social media app, pandemonium! Yep. I mean, you know what, though? Let the libs burn themselves out. Because as far as I'm concerned, I come to Fox News for news, and I go to Twitter for hysteria. Mm. Yep. Well done. <laughs> it is kind of like an interesting analogy that Emily brought up, Kat. You kind of like when the media responds to uh, Trump, they have to, like, they're, like a, they're like a pet. They have to run around and run around in circles. You just have to <laughs> wait till they tire out, and then you get on with your day. How did you take the news? What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> uh, I, I also don't believe all these people who hate Trump saying that they're upset about him being back on Twitter. Because all of us, mm. I mean, okay, maybe it's just me, but I don't think so. My favorite people to follow on social media are not the people I like. Right. It's the people who are the best, most entertaining people to talk about. Yes. Some of you get it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, like certain friends you've met or family, you're like, oh, you're not gonna believe what she said, send it to the group chat. Uh, so I think the people who hate Trump are probably the most excited because they've actually, ever since Trump's been off Twitter, they've had to work a little harder. Mm -hmm. Rather than a lot of these journalists, all they would do was just quote his, everything he tweeted and go, wow. Yeah, and that's what they would do even when he was on Truth Social. Which, yeah. I mean, but the thing is, he can't go on Twitter because that, that's why you go to Truth Social, to see him. Yeah. Right, he can't, but he needs to. I mean, if he's running for president, you can't leave 90 million people hanging. Yeah. It would be funny if he just never did, though. <laughs> yeah. It would be funny. <laughs> After all this, he never does a tweet. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> that would be funny. one thing. I'm not tweeting. <laughs> no. I'm not tweeting. Not at all. He goes, one more thing. But if all he right. doesn't, how long will people talk about it? Yeah. He still doesn't do it. Yeah, that's... And I'm watching the news now, they're declaring the end of the Trump era. Now, okay, I can see how in New York, you might believe this is the end of his era. I'm, I'm just being honest with you. I live in Ohio amongst the poor whites. <laughs> A lot of you don't understand why Trump was so popular, but I, I get it, because I hear it every day. He's very loved. And the reason he's loved is because people in Ohio have never seen somebody like him. He's what I call an honest liar. I'm not joking right now. He's an honest liar. That first debate, that first debate, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen a white 
male billionaire screaming at the top of his lungs, this whole system is rigged, he said. And across the stage was a white woman, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, sitting over there looking at him like, no, it's not. I said, now, wait a minute, bro. It's what he said. And the moderator said, well, Mr. Trump, if in fact the system is rigged, as you suggest, what would be your evidence? Remember what he said, bro? He said, I know the system is rigged because I use it. I said, God damn. <laughs> and then he pulled out an Illuminati membership card and chopped a line of cocaine up and did it right into the podium. No one had ever heard someone say something that true. And then Hillary Clinton tried to punch him in the taxes. She said, this man doesn't pay his taxes. He shot right back. That makes me smart. <laughs> and then he said, if you want me to pay my taxes, then change the tax code. But I know you won't, because your friends and your donors enjoy the same tax breaks that I do. And with that, my friends, the star was born. <laughs> no one had ever seen anything like that. No one had ever seen somebody come from inside of that house, outside, and tell all the commoners, we are doing everything that you think we are doing <laughs> inside of that house. They just went right back in the house and started playing the game again. 